Bao Fang Dual Band DMR. And it starts right now. Hey guys, what is up? My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. If this is your first time here, please go to the subscribe button on this channel and subscribe to this YouTube channel for everything that we post and to keep up with all our videos and get our subscriber count up on YouTube. So today, Baofeng Dual Band DMR. This model is the RD5R, which you can see right there. And I know what you're thinking. It's a Baofeng, so it can't be any good. There's some truth to that <laughs> because, well, in the past there was some truth to that because they had they did a model called a DM5R a while back that was released by Radi Oddity that was single time slot upgradable to dual time slot. I was suspect of that when it first came out. I'm like, that's going to require hardware change, guys. You can't do that in firmware. And sure enough, you know, it failed. Uh, they they after the upgrade, what the the radio technically worked. It had very low audio, and it would transmit on both time slots. So you'd hear the audio on one time slot, and then you'd just hear noise on the other time slot. So it would tie up two time slots on on a repeater. And a lot of repeater owners came back and said, "You can't use that radio on my repeater anymore." So you don't see those much anymore. This is the quote newer model. They've actually got two or three uh, newer models out past this one. I picked this one up on Amazon. Um, the link will be down there in the comments on uh, on YouTube. Uh, if anyone has this radio and uses it successfully, please comment on the video and let me know about it. So what I did was I programmed a channel into this radio from the front panel. And I'll show you guys the panel in a minute. The screen's really small. It's not nearly as big as the, uh, as the AnyTone or the, the TYT screens. Um, but I did several QSOs yesterday, and I got some good audio reports, and I said, I'm testing new radio, and they said, what kind? I said, well, tell me how it sounds first before I tell you what kind it is. <laughs> uh, and they said, no, no, it sounds good audio, and then I told them what it was, and uh, this one guy I was talking to, he's like, man, I would, if you wouldn't have told me that, I wouldn't have known. It, it's, it sounds great. Uh, there's no low audio. There's no warbling, nothing like that. I have a backyard repeater I have set up here at the house, which I've talked about before, so I was using that repeater. I have not used it on a hot spot at the, point, at the time of this recording, but... Um, but it works great on a repeater. You can program the entire... It's got two VFOs, so it's got two readouts on the display here, and I'll show you guys that in a second. It's got two readouts on the display. It'll go to VHF or UHF on each one, and it'll go to VFO mode or it'll go to channel mode. So if you go into VFO mode, you can you can hit the up-down buttons here on, on, this, on the radio, on the keypad, rather, and um, change frequencies, of course, you know. 2.5 kilohertz step, 5 kilohertz step. You can change all that in the menu. And then so you can go and you can punch in the, the DTMF uh, keys and punch in your frequency. You can go into the menu. You can set your offset. You can set your color code. You can set it to be an either an analog or a digital channel. You can set uh, PL tone, CTCSS if it's on analog. You can set uh, the time slot. You can name the channel and you can save it in the memory. You cannot set the contact. Okay, you cannot set the contact in here. It uses the default contact of one, which when the straight out of the box, the radio only had three contacts, and they were named contact one, contact two, contact three, and the DMR subscriber ID for, or the, the the contact ID on each one was one, two, and three. So it was worldwide, uh, local area two, and three for North America if you're on a repeater system. So. So what I did was I went into the contact list and I changed contact one to number two and um, I deleted contact two. I changed contact one to number two and renamed it to local and then it, w and then it worked and you were able to do that. But what I really did uh, to, do, to do it the best way was I put it in the computer And this is the programming software, and it's actually pretty straightforward. Now, when I first installed this, I, I installed it as administrator, and it came up and it gave me a .NET, Microsoft .NET 3.5 error. And when I clicked OK, it, autom it, it immediately forwarded me to Radiodity's site, which Radiodity is where I downloaded the software. So it, made it, it immediately forwarded me to Radiodity's site and gave me a link to download a, hot, a, a .NET fix. I installed that. It went through the whole Windows Defender thing and passed the test and everything. I installed that, and then the CPS was able to install. After I had to restart the CPS install, and then it worked after that. And it comes up, and um, I didn't have to set the port on the radio. The um, the 
the cable is not inside right now. It's a standard two-prong uh, Kenwood connector on the side of the radio. The radio did come. I got again. I got this radio from Amazon. It did come with a cable, so I didn't have any problems there. And um, I plugged it in. It's a little bit tight of a connection. You make make sure you get it in all the way. And I didn't like the fact that you kind of have to push it in hard from this side, and the PTT's right there. So sometimes if you squeeze both sides of the radio, you'll key it up when you're trying to put the programming cable into it. So just be careful of that. There's three buttons over here on this side on the opposite side from where the programming cable goes into. But once you get it, it read fine, it wrote fine, I didn't have any problems. I went in here, right right here. I uh, recreated my um, contact number one, contact number two, contact number three, and then I added Southeast Texas, one of our Texas talk groups that's uh, connected on Brandmeister over here in Texas, 31482, I added that. It automatically puts these zeros in front of the number for whatever reason. Um, and then uh, I was able to go into the, the action, and I just left it in VFO mode the whole time. Um, if you go down here to VFO, VFO A, which is right here, so I've got the frequency, uh, that's my VHF, that's the second band you see on the screen. So I've got a plus five offset, UHF, of course, digital, of course, and you go down here. I did have to add, before I was able to talk on 31482, since 31482 was one that I physically added myself to the code plug, I did have to add that to the receive group, to the group list, uh, RX group list one right here. It wasn't there before. So I keyed up my repeater on 31482. I threw out my call sign, I saw the activity light come back to me, I was watching the net watch at the time and I saw a station come back to me and I wasn't able to hear it so I went back into the software put the put the new 31482 ID into my receive group group list one and I was able to hear that after that point. Now most of these modern radios they will automatically add your transmit group as a receive group also so you don't even have to set up a receive group most of the time anymore. Especially if you've got one of these radios with promiscuous mode. I could not find anything that actually said promiscuous mode on this radio. If it's there, it might be named something else. Someone who's got this radio a little bit longer than I have, maybe you know about that. But I didn't find promiscuous mode, and it certainly wasn't enabled by default. Otherwise, I would have heard that traffic on 31482. I had to physically add the talk group to my receive group list. There might be a way around that. I haven't taken the time to research it, so just FYI right there. But once I added it, and the color code was there, and the contact was there, and the repeater slot was already there, and I wrote to the radio for the second time, and I was able to have a QSO on it right there. KC5 HWB testing on Southeast Texas. So if you go here, and you go here, and you go here, I just keyed up this talk group right here, Southeast Texas, which is 31482, and that's me. I'm on the Lake Fork, Texas repeater, which is actually in my backyard right now. Uh, I'm just testing it before we go out there again. Lake Fork's out in East Texas, out outside of Emory, uh, on the other side of Lake Tawakany. So um, I'll have that repeater out there soon. Anyway, so the so all intents and purposes, it works fine. It is uh, the screen on it, which uh, which again I'll show you that in just a second. The screen on it is not. It's very small. I'll put it that way. It's just got the very basic information on it, okay? So at the time of this recording, maybe this will be uh, updated later on in firmware. I don't know. But at the time of this recording, this radio only holds 256 contacts, uh, 64 received groups with 16 contacts in each one, 250 zones, and 1,024 overall channels. So honestly... There's too many drawbacks for it. It sounds good if you get one given to you, if you win one at a ham fest somewhere, if you want to set it up, if you just like the style of the bale fang, you could probably put your UV5R extended batteries on the back of this thing. The form factor is very, very, very similar, if not exactly the same. I've actually never reviewed a UV5R on the show, but I'm okay with that. So, um, uh, if... For the money, I think I paid around eighty dollars, maybe seventy seventy to eighty dollars for this. Again, I'll put a link to the Amazon page, which is where I got this. I'll put a link in the uh, video down below, in, in the comments down below. So I don't know, maybe, maybe not. It's it's uh, it's probably for the for the lack of features and the small screen, it's probably not worth it. But if you pick one up, 
it does work. It sounds good. I've got good audio reports. It's fairly easy to program. The software is pretty straightforward, as you can see here. And it's uh, there's there's uh, not a lot of features to it. That that would be my only complaint. So uh, let me show you the screen real quick. So you see the screen right here, and you know the DTMF keypads look the same. You know A B got A B there between the top and the bottom band. VFO and DMR, I'm sorry, <laughs> VFO and MR for memory. You see the memory channels over there on the far right. So you can you can go to VFO in the top band and still be on memory in the bottom band. And go to VFO in the bottom band, and switch back, and go to memory on the top band. So that's pretty cool. Some of the early models of dual band DMR radios wouldn't do that. But I'm going to go to here, and then the menu is just really straightforward. It's just got two lines per menu, contact message, call logs, set, and zone. Zone, you just change zones. Set is where you're going to do most of your programming. Radio set, radio info, radio config is where you want to go. And then you get the RX frequency, the transmit frequency, the channel name you can set. You can write down the channel name. Color code, slot, shift frequency, which is, of course, going to be you know, 5 megahertz up or down. Uh, let's see. And then shift direction, plus or minus, or you can turn it off. I just turned it off. Oops. Shift direction plus frequency step, which is, is since we're in VFO mode, that matters. Uh, channel type, you can go, of course, FM or DMR. So... You can do that there, and then it goes back to, to uh, re receive frequency. So you got nine options in the menu. So like I said, there's no option when you're in VFO mode to set the contact. And then even if you, if you go back into the channel, radio set is just, you know, for your transmit power, talk around, busy lock, you know, this kind of thing. Radio info, that's going to give all my numbers. Radio ID, that's my ID. Device info, here's, it was about one version of firmware behind. Uh, when you download this, the programming software from Radioddity, you can get the firmware package. Uh, this was at 2.00. something when I got it, so I upgraded it to 2.01.06. Uh, but that's where you find all the device info. But there's nowhere in here to go to exit one more. There's no option in here to set the contact. So I think that, and when the Anytone first came out, it was the same way. I think they've updated that by now. I could be wrong on that. But there's been several of these that have come out where you can set everything you need to except the contact, so it's almost kind of useless. I say it's kind of useless. It's kind of useless as, as far as programming from the front panel, but it's not useless useless. I mean, you can still get everything you need to get done in the, in the software. But uh, anyway, so that is the Baofeng RD5R Dual Band Digital DMR radio. So thanks for checking out uh, the YouTube channel, guys. Uh, be, uh, again, be sure and subscribe to me on YouTube so I can get the channel count up and so that you can be notified of all the new videos that I'm doing. Um, this time next week, I'll be at the Tapper DCC in Albuquerque. Hope to see some of you there. And uh, just keep watching and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Thanks in 73. This has been Ham Radio 2.0, a YouTube production by KC5HWB. Visit our website at www.livefromthehamshack.tv. Please also stop by our Facebook page at fb.me slash hamradio2. Be sure and subscribe here on YouTube to keep up with all the new videos that are posted nearly every Monday. 73 is everyone and thanks for watching.